Hello and welcome. If you watched my last video of last week, you may have seen how I got this cushion cover right here at IKEA uh, for my sewing studio because I just absolutely fell in love with this lovely, lovely William Morris style print. This just screams cottagecore to me. It's the perfect color that I'm painting my entire house in and I just love it. So in that video, I mentioned how I really hope that IKEA bring this out as a fabric, like yardage fabric, because they do sell those as of yet. Somebody actually mentioned that they're probably gonna stop doing that. I, I really hope they don't, fingers crossed, because I love their fabric. Because I can really see myself making clothing out of this and one clothing item in particular. So I may or may not have gone back to Ikea and bought myself two more of these because I realized that the size of two of these should be just about enough to make a corset top, which I think would be the perfect thing to make out of this fabric. Doesn't this just scream corset top? So speaking of corset tops, you may also remember if you've been following my videos for a while, that there is a pattern, a corset top pattern that I was really hoping to get months ago, but it was sold out everywhere in the Netherlands and even in some of the surrounding European countries that I looked in online. I just couldn't find it anywhere, it was out of stock. But then a lovely, lovely viewer of mine found one of these in her local store and she very kindly sent it to me. So I now have the famous Butterick corset top pattern. Oh, I am so excited to have this now. I feel like this is going to become a staple. This style of bodice and corset top is just quintessential to the cottage core style, I feel. So I cannot wait to start working with this. And that is just what I'm gonna do today with this and the IKEA cushion cover. I'm gonna try and make a fantastic corset top. As for the version, because this comes with four different versions so you can mix and match, obviously, I think I'm gonna go with B, or at least I would really love to go with version B, which is the one with the peplum top. However, I'm not entirely sure if I will have enough fabric to make the peplum as well. If I don't, then I'll just go for version A here. I would really, really love to make the full peplum because that would really set it apart from the other corset tops I've already made. Also, actually using IKEA fabric. <laughs> this kind of upholstery weight fabric just lends itself really well to corset making because it's able to uphold and withstand a lot. What I'm gonna do with this pattern, by the way, is to trace it onto pattern paper because I plan to use this um, pattern for both corset tops as well as, as a base for bodices. And for the corset tops, I want to size down a little bit. So I'm just gonna trace it so that I have um, all the original sizes available still as well. Let's get started. Alright, now that my pattern pieces are cut out and my fabric is prepped, I have straightened this out as best as I could and honestly there is quite a lot of fabric in one of those cushion covers. So I'm honestly hopeful that this might actually work out with the peplum as well because the pattern pieces themselves aren't that big, um, but you do need to cut everything twice except for the center back. So I'm just gonna lay them out see how far we get and if I'm very very lucky I might even be able to do some pattern matching although I must admit I'm not the best at that. At first I'm just gonna try to lay these out make sure that everything fits and I'll worry about potentially pattern matching later. <laughs> it fits, it fits perfectly there's no problem at all. In fact if I had made just the bodice without a peplum one cushion cover would have been enough. So I can use the entirety of the second one to make my peplum, yay! Oh, this is fantastic. Oh, I'm very, very happy with that. So I think I might open this up, cut them out individually, just so that I can pattern match. Oh, 
Okay, I have all of my pattern pieces cut out here, including the peplum. Everything worked out. I have enough fabric, which is fantastic. So this is the lining color that I chose um, to go with it. It's a scrap of fabric that I still had in my stash, so I think that would be great to use that up. Um, so I'm gonna cut up all of these out from the lining fabric as well, and then I can finally get started on assembly. I always underestimate how long it takes to prep for sewing, just tracing the pattern, cutting out all the pieces, transferring all the markings and everything, but it's worth it and it's necessary. <laughs> Let's keep going. Good morning, it is day two. It did indeed take me all day yesterday to just do the prep work. Although I did manage to practice with the lining, so I attached all the lining pieces together. By the way, this is a great tip if you kind of want to do a mock-up, um, but don't want to waste fabric, you can try and make a mock-up out of your lining fabric and then just use that as lining if it works. And if it doesn't work, then of course you need to alter the pattern. I could have done that if I had remembered to do that before I started and actually cut out all my pattern pieces. Anyways, what I do want to do is uh, try on that lining and see if I need to shorten the waist at all, because my upper body is quite short. I have very long legs, quite a short upper body. Usually the waist sits a little bit below my natural waist. So I'm gonna see if I need to shorten that. And that way I can be sure that it fits perfectly, because of course the peplum top does need to sit right at the waist. Just gonna finish my tea here, enjoy some of that lovely bird song, and then get started. All right, here we have it. And I can already tell this is a little bit too long. Of course, there is seam allowance, but even with that, I still think it's gonna be a bit too long. Although I must say the back does hit me at the waist a little bit better than the front does. Yeah, it's honestly just this bit right here that kind of dips down. Yeah, that just, that doesn't work. I'll start by just taking off one centimeter all around. Okay, I think considering this still has a little bit of seam allowance to attach the peplum, this should do it. Um, so I will just assemble the outer fabric as well and then um, trim it to this length once they are attached together so that I don't have to uh, measure out all of the individual pieces. I do think this was a good decision, just shortening it a little bit. Okay, so the outer part of my corset is finished as well. Corset top. <laughs> I must say, considering how curvy of a garment this is, I am quite happy with the pattern matching, actually. When you look at it from a little bit of a distance, it does look like a fairly continuous pattern. And of course, I made sure that the front was a perfect match, so that is great. Anyways, it's time to insert the lining, and I did want to just mention that I am 
assembling this in a little bit of a different way than what the pattern says. Um, they say in the pattern to not attach the side panels to the back panel and leave it open and you're then supposed to insert the lining first and then leave the back seams exposed and bind them when you're binding the whole garment. I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna do the more traditional way. So I'm just gonna attach the lining to the outside and bind only around the outside of it. I think the other way could be cute as well but I, I, I don't know, I think I just prefer it this way. So I am gonna just attach the lining here, then of course trim down the bottom, you can already see it's a little bit longer here. And uh, then I can get started on attaching the peplum. I have my peplum done as well as the peplum lining. So I'm just gonna attach those together as well and then start attaching the peplum to the top. Yesterday evening, I spent the entire evening in front of the television stitching down this bias tape, but it is done and it looks gorgeous. It was a lot of work. I did all of the outsides by machine and then slip stitched along the insides by hand. It's quite a bit of length, honestly, it goes around the entire garment. I have to say I am glad that I didn't follow the pattern and didn't do the bias tape along the back here as well. I just think it would have been too much. I prefer it this way. Um, it's just a nice edge finish like this. I'm really, really, really happy with it. It looks great. I'm very satisfied with the finishing of this garment in general. It's something I tend to slack on a little bit, but this one, I was thorough with it and I think it shows. Um, it looks like a really high quality garment. And I'm very happy with that. So all there's left to do right now is to install the eyelets, thread through some type of lacing, and then it'll be done. So yeah. Only a little bit more work left and then I can wear it. I can already feel that this is going to be one of those items that I don't really know how to wear in daily life. But I just really want to have it. <laughs> it's so gorgeous. And if not for real life, I can always wear it on Instagram. Oh my gosh, guys, I love it. I love it so much. Yes, this was the perfect fabric to do this with. I am convinced this looks amazing. I want them in all colors. This fulfills all of my fantasy movie dreams. Look at it. I am so glad to have this pattern now and to be able to expand on this and just make more of these. I don't even care what I can wear it with or not. I am sure I will figure it out because I love this so much. It did make me realize what's missing from my wardrobe and that is a floor length green skirt or brown or both. Maybe it is time I make finally one of those Edwardian walking skirts. I think that will be perfect. I might have to look into that and do that soon. I feel like I'm the last sewing YouTuber to do one of those but I will get to it one day, maybe. Who knows? But for now, this is it. This is it for this video. I am over the moon. I couldn't be happier. It's done. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I have some really fun projects planned for the rest of autumn. I did a fabric haul a while back. I went to our 
current new nearest fabric store. I did buy a bunch of really nice autumn winter fabrics. So I have some plaid, I have some kind of Czech fabrics. I have this really cute faux quilt material that's going to be amazing to make something out of. I have really fun plans for all of those. So yeah, definitely stick around and subscribe to stay updated on all of my future plans. Please do give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. It really helps my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye guys!